Good morning, everyone. I wish you all a very blessed Christmas season ahead. May the reality of Christ's love be a deep and abiding realization for you this Christmas time as you meditate and strive to share Christ's love with all. The subject of our service this morning is the deeper teachings of Jesus Christ. So please rise and we'll have our opening prayer. Heavenly Father, Mother, Friend, Beloved God, Jesus Christ, Bhagavan Krishna, Mahavatar Babaji, Laheri Mahashaya, Swami Sri Yukteswar, and our Guru, Paramahansa Yogananda, saints of all religions, we bow to you all. Beloved Christ, O fountain of love, make me feel that my heart is flooded by thine omnipresent love and help me to share that love with all who cross my path. Om, peace, amen. Please be seated. So we start our services with a period of meditation. And one of the helpful keys in meditation is if we can deeply think that that God is with us, that our Guru is with us, and at Christmas time we can deeply think Christ is with us in our meditations, blessing us, helping us to go deeper into that inner relationship with God and that perception of inner peace, a perception of Christ's vast love. And so let's just take a moment right now and just think that God and the great ones are with us, that Christ is with us, blessing us in this meditation. And then we'll have a chant, and if you know meditation technique, you can practice it for a short while, and then just... We can just commune with Christ in the language of our hearts, whatever we want to say. And we can also be very still, just trying to feel that blessed presence of Christ, feel his blessed presence, feel his love, feel his peace. Our chant is Door of My Heart. It's on page 15 of the little chance booklet if you're cosmic chance booklet if you're unfamiliar with it door of my heart open wide i keep for thee door of my heart open wide i keep for thee wilt thou come wilt thou come just for once come to me wilt thou come wilt thou come just for once come to me will my days fly away without seeing thee my lord will my days fly away without seeing thee my lord night and day night and day i look for thee night and Night and day, night and day, I look for thee night and day. Door of my heart, open wide I keep for thee. Door of my heart, open wide I keep for thee. Wilt thou come, wilt thou come, just for once come to me. Wilt thou come, wilt thou come, just for once come to me will my days fly away without seeing thee my lord will my days fly away without seeing thee my lord night and day night and day i look for thee night and day night and day night and day i look for thee night and day 
Open wide, I keep for thee, Torah my heart. Open wide, I keep for thee, wilt thou come, wilt thou come, just for once come to me. Wilt thou come, wilt thou come, just for once come to me. Will my days fly away without seeing thee, my Fly away without seeing thee, my Lord. Night and day, night and day, I look for thee, night and day. Night and day, night and day, I look for thee, night and day. Night and day, night and day, I look for thee, night and day. Night and day, night and day. I look for thee night and day, night and day, night and day. I look for thee night and day, night and day, night and day. I look for thee night and
In the Old Testament, there's a story of Jacob, who was one of the grandsons of Abraham. And Jacob was traveling toward the city of Haran, and he stopped for the evening to rest. He fell asleep and had a dream. And in the dream, he saw this giant ladder extending from the earth up to heaven. And there were angels ascending and descending this ladder. The Bible doesn't explain the dream he had. And that is typical of a number of places in the Bible where there's some deep symbology going on, but we are just given the symbol. Now, once a minister was visiting with a Sunday school class, and he asked, now, is there any child who would like to ask me a question? And one of the little boys had this story of Jacob's ladder on his mind. And he said, why did the angels walk up and down the ladder when they had wings? (laughs) And the minister didn't quite know how to answer that question. And so he said, now, is there any child who would like to answer that question? (laughs) The scriptures contain deep truths that are sometimes hidden within symbols. Sometimes they are hidden by misinterpretations or mistranslations. And on our path of Kriya Yoga, We are so fortunate to have a line of God-realized gurus who have attained the highest states of consciousness, Christ consciousness and cosmic consciousness. And from those very high states of consciousness, they can explain to us the meaning, the deeper meaning behind the symbols in the Bible. And they can explain to us in modern-day language that deepest truth that can help us practice various spiritual principles on the spiritual path, and thus make quicker progress back to inwardly perceiving God's peace, God's love, God's joy within, making us more able to share that inner bounty with others. In his book, Autobiography of a Yogi, our beloved guru, Paramahansa Yogananda, wrote, One of the happiest periods of my life was spent in dictating my interpretation of part of the New Testament. Fervently, I implored Christ to guide me in divining the true meaning of his words, many of which have been grievously misunderstood for 20 centuries. One night, while I was engaged in silent prayer, I beheld the radiant form of the blessed Lord Jesus, His eyes were eternally wondrous. As I gazed, they were infinitely changing. With each divine transition in their expression, I intuitively understood the wisdom conveyed. A holy grail appeared at his mouth. It came down to my lips and then returned to Jesus. After a few moments, he uttered beautiful words. And Master said Christ told him, We drink from the same cup. Meaning they drink from the same cup of God consciousness. And so Master has come into our lives to help explain to us deep spiritual truths that if we practice them, we can transform our consciousness. We can lift our consciousness from body consciousness to super consciousness and Christ consciousness and finally cosmic consciousness. And he explains things without misinterpretations, without superficial dogma. There's one young boy who could appreciate this. He was in a Sunday school class, an SRF Sunday school class, and they were given an assignment to write a letter to Master. And part of his letter reads, Dear Master, I have always been in SRF. I can't remember when I didn't know about you. Thank you for making our lives easier to live. Thank you also for interpreting stuff so we don't have to guess. And last of all, thanks for not telling us a lot of really stupid stuff. (laughs) And so here's an old soul in a young body 
They probably had it up to here in a previous incarnation. I've been told a lot of divisive dogma and different misinterpretations, and he could appreciate the crystal clear interpretation in modern language that our beloved Guru gives us of the deeper teachings of Jesus Christ. In the SRF YSS lessons, and also in Master's book, The Second Coming of Christ, he gives a lot of explanations about the deeper teachings of Jesus Christ, which involve things like concentrating at the spiritual eye in meditation and the value of that, the importance of that, how to do it. He talks about communing with the Holy Spirit, the comforter which Christ said he would send. He talks about the different scientific principles behind Christ's healing miracles that he performed. He talks about the infinite cosmic love that Christ had for all in such a beautiful way. Many, many other things about the deeper teachings are in the lessons and in the second coming of Christ. So if you want to study more, those are two wonderful sources to look into the deeper teachings. One of Master's key early disciples here in America was Dr. Lewis, who was at the time that they met a young dentist practicing in the Boston area. And they met on Christmas Eve, a little over 100 years ago now, 1920. And when they met, Dr. Lewis had all kinds of questions for Master about the spiritual path. And during their conversation, he said, The Bible tells us the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Can you explain this? And Master humbly said, I think so. Doctor was still doubtful. And he said, I have asked many persons, and no one seems to know the meaning. Can you show me these things? And again, Master humbly said, I think so. And doctor finally said, then for heaven's sake, please show me. (laughs) And master was able to bless Dr. Lewis and uplift his consciousness so that for the first time in his life, he saw the light of the spiritual eye. And so not only can the guru come into our lives to explain the deeper teachings, he is also there with us every step of the way as we practice blessing us guiding us, helping to uplift our consciousness. Master said, when the purpose of meditation is fulfilled, you find your consciousness automatically concentrated at the spiritual eye, and you experience, according to your inner spiritual capacity, a state of joyous, divine union with spirit. And so just knowing that we should be daily lifting our gaze, concentrating our mind at the Christ center, we are so blessed to have that deeper instruction because this is a very sensitive center in our consciousness for feeling God's presence, God's peace, God's love, God's joy, God's light. And we are concentrating there. We're making an effort every day. And that will eventually bear much fruit in divine inner perceptions, in much deeper feeling of God's presence in our lives. Now again, again, Christ said, If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. And Master commented on this, saying, As one switch throws light into the two headlights of an automobile, So the astral center of superconsciousness in the medulla throws its current into the two physical eyes that behold the world of duality. But by deep concentration on the point between the two eyes, the light of the medulla flowing into the two eyes can be made to converge into one single spiritual eye in the forehead. Jesus said, If therefore thine eye be single, my whole body shall be full of light. Through this eye of omnipresence, the devotee enters into the realms of divine consciousness. 
And so imagine it through this eye. So when we first see it, it is like a two-dimensional shimmering object, but as you concentrate on it, eventually you'll see that it is like three tunnels of light that the consciousness must penetrate into and then expand more into the awareness of God. When you see the spiritual eye perfectly, the lesson state, you will see at the center a five-pointed star surrounded by a blue light, which in turn is encircled by a halo of golden light. And Master gave us a visualization to help us to experience what it is like to see the eye and then to begin to penetrate our consciousness into those three tunnels of light. And I'd like us all to practice this, if we could today. So please just sit in the upright meditation posture, spine is erect, chin parallel to the ground, hands with the palms upturned, resting on the thighs at the juncture of the thighs and abdomen, if that's comfortable for you. You can just push them a little forward if that's not comfortable for you. And then we just lift our gaze gently, close our eyes, and follow along with this visualization. Master said, visualize in front of you a portion of the white shell of the sky. Then picture in it a big golden tunnel with a 50-foot mouth. Mentally enter this tunnel, feeling the presence of cosmic vitality. It will only take an instant to travel 100 miles through the golden tunnel. At its end, you will see an opening 25 feet wide into a blue tunnel. Mentally travel a thousand miles instantaneously through this blue tunnel, feeling yourself surrounded by Christ intelligence. At the end of the blue tunnel, see a five-pointed silver star, which is a five-foot gate to infinitude. Your feeling, saturated with cosmic ever-new bliss, passes through this silver gate and travels instantaneously along a million miles of silver path. As you come out of the golden blue tunnels and travel past the silver gate, feeling power, intelligence, and ever new joy, you leave the shell of the sky and enter the vastness of eternal light. All right. Now, sometimes these deeper truths in the Bible are hidden through mistranslations. And this happens in other scriptures as well, Bhagavad Gita, for instance. There's one passage in the Bhagavad Gita that refers to concentrating at the spiritual eye in meditation. And it is often translated like this. Fix one's vision on the end of the nose. Now, if we fix our vision on the end of the nose, we go cross-eyed. This inaccurate interpretation is accepted by many Eastern pundits and many Western translators as accurate. Concerning this mistranslation, Swami Sri Teshwar said, the path of a yogi is singular enough as it is. Why counsel him that he must also make himself cross-eyed? <laughs> the true meaning of Nazikagram is origin of the nose, not end of the nose. The nose originates at the point between the eyebrows, the seat of spiritual vision. And so we have a God-realized avatar, Swami Sri Teshwar, saying that this passage in the Gita is, it gives the instruction to concentrate at the spiritual eye. And we have pundits and translators who are saying this instruction is to make yourself cross-eyed. Which do we think is going to help us go deeper in meditation? From their high state of God consciousness, our beloved gurus, 
Give us the full meaning of Scripture, scriptural instruction. And we are taught both the moral lessons as well as the deeper esoteric lessons that are in the Scripture. And thus we are saved from incarnations of going cross-eyed, <laughs> of following instructions from someone who is operating from the level of the intellect instead of the level of God consciousness in interpreting what the Scripture means. So I know our hearts are truly thankful that we are being given such clear instructions for what is the Scripture telling us to do in our daily lives. There was once a book that came in on yoga, Hatha yoga. And so I was interested in a couple Hatha yoga poses, and so I just was flipping open the book. And there was a picture in this book of someone sitting in the meditation posture, staring at the tip of their nose cross-eyed. Their eyes were open. And this was the instruction that was being given on how to deeply meditate. And I just inwardly, I just went to my knees in front of Master and just said, thank you, Master, for giving me you know, the true, deeper teachings without these misinterpretations. We are so blessed to have the teachings that we are being given. Now, I'd just like to read through the instructions that are given right in Lesson 1 on where to position the eyes, where to put the attention. And this is put in the first lesson. It's extremely important for us to learn. And it says, During meditation, the eyes should be turned upward with the gaze and attention focused as though looking out through a point between the eyebrows. This is the spiritual center of concentration in the body. In meditation, the eyelids may be half closed or completely closed, if this seems more comfortable to you. Do not cross the eyes or strain them. The upward gaze comes easily and naturally when one is relaxed and calmly concentrated. Most important, fix the mind and the attention at the point between the eyebrows. So we're given such clear instructions on how to do this in meditation. We are so, so blessed. We could search the whole world and find very few places where it is so clearly explained how to do it, why to do it. Now, meditation is the inner way of expanding the cup of our consciousness. But Master also talks about the social way of expanding the cup of our consciousness. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Christ radiated God's unconditional love to all. He radiated that perfect love. Our own guru did the same. And in his booklet, Metaphysical Meditations, Master gives us an affirmation to help us to really feel that, that radiant love that Christ shared with all. The affirmation goes, I will radiate love and goodwill to others, that I may open a channel for God's love to come to all. So let's practice this affirmation together. Feel that Christ is with you, blessing you, pouring his love into your heart. And let us repeat out loud together. I will radiate love and goodwill to others that I may open a channel for God's love to come to all. I will radiate love and goodwill to others that I may open a channel for God's love to come to all. I will radiate love and goodwill to others that I may open a channel for God's love to come to all. I will radiate love and goodwill to others that I may open a channel for God's love to come to all. 
I will radiate love and goodwill to others that I may open a channel for God's love to come to all. And now I'll just spend a few moments just feeling that God's love is pouring into your heart and then you're sending that love out in all directions to all souls everywhere, unconditionally. Everyone is to receive that love. Now, the affirmation is that we are to send this love to all, not just those who are kind to us. And expressing love and kindness towards those who aren't kind toward us is not always easy. But Christ showed us the way where in that extreme situation of the crucifixion, even then, he was able to pray, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Even then, that perfect love. There was a woman who once called a company to have her hot water heater changed out. And a very surly man showed up who was in a mood, and she was trying to engage him in conversation as, as he was starting his work. And he gave very short answers, very curt answers, wasn't really interested in having a conversation with her. And so she just thought, well, he's just you know, a sour old man. And she just left him be in to do his work. And when the job was over, then he needed to wait to have someone else come out and they could then lift the hot water heater out of the basement. And so she invited him to sit at her kitchen table and offered him some coffee. And he just said, nope, just kind of crossed this arms and just wasn't that talkative. But a few moments later, he said, what is that that's flashing on your dining room table? And she went over and picked it up and brought it over. And this was at the time when these solar cells, solar-powered clocks were being designed and created. And it was one of these solar clocks. And it flashed the time and that flashed the name of the company that she worked for. And so he was fascinated by this new technology and and he put it down by him on the table. And, and she just went about her business. And, but she saw that he was looking at this little clock and was, was intrigued. And so finally, this other assistant came. They got the hot water heater out of the basement, signing the final paperwork. And just as they were about to part, this woman just had this little urge in her heart to do something kind for this man who hadn't been very kind towards her. And she said, would you wait a moment? He said, yes. And she went in and she got this little solar clock. And she said, here, take this with you. And he was really touched by the gesture. And he said, are you sure? And she said, yes, I'd like you to have it. And so he was about to leave. And she could see he was very touched. And he turned back towards her and he said, you know, my wife died six weeks ago. And this is the first kind thing anyone's done for me. And then they parted, and the woman just walked into her, back into her kitchen. She sat down in the chair, and she just started to cry. She was so, so touched by that moment. She had responded to that inner call to be kind, to express kindness towards someone who hadn't been so kind toward her. And her heart had become a channel for God's love to reach out and touch the soul in his time of great need. And so in our own lives, we can be these little channels for God's love to reach out and touch the lives of others. We're sharing love with those who love us and those who are perhaps unkind towards us to send that same unconditional love to them. And this is a very deep part of Christ's teachings. 
to love thy neighbor as thyself and do that as perfectly as we can. It's a very deep part. Once Master said, there is no more liberating action. So of all the outer actions we can do, he's describing the most liberating action outwardly. There is no more liberating action than sincerely to give people kindness in return for unkindness. No more liberating action than that to take us out of the selfish ego and bring us into this realm of Christ consciousness. This more perfect love. The full quote from Master reads, Go out of your way to make others happy. You cannot please everybody, but to those souls who cross your path, give kindness and love. There is no more liberating action than sincerely to give people kindness in return for unkindness. Why not be like a flower that gives fragrance even when crushed in the hand? And then he quotes the Gita and says, the Gita teaches, he who is free from hatred toward all creatures, is friendly and kind to all, is dear to me. Friendly and kind to all. That was Christ. That is Christ. And he's asking us to walk in his footsteps. And so as you strive to feel that infinite love of Christ in your meditations this Christmas time. And then as you try to express that infinite love towards all those who cross your path, may Christ's living presence be a deeper reality for you this Christmas time. May you feel that he is walking by your side, blessing you, guiding you, uplifting you as you strive to live in harmony with the principles that he taught. And again, it is not always easy to express love and kindness towards those who haven't been kind toward us. And some, you may keep a distance from some people, but from that distance, to send them love, to send them goodwill. And then there may come a time where you can meet and talk and share that love personally. And some we may never meet, and just from a a very far distance across the world, be sending them love and goodwill. Just that universal love that reaches out to want to help, to want everyone to find happiness, everyone to feel God's nearness, love, and joy. And in an effort to, again, tune in more with this infinite love of Christ that seeks to embrace all. Let us practice at the close of our service today, again, this affirmation on Christ's love. So please sit in the upright meditation posture. Close your eyes, lift your gaze to the Christ center. And please repeat after me. I will radiate love and goodwill to others that I may open a channel for God's love to come to all. I will radiate love and goodwill to others that I may open a channel for God's love to come to all. I will radiate love and goodwill to others that I may open a channel for God's love to come to all. I will radiate love and goodwill to others that I may open a channel for God's love to come to all. Just for a moment, feel how that radiant, unconditional love connects you to all souls everywhere.
I will radiate love and goodwill to others that I may open a channel for God's love to come to all. I will radiate love and goodwill to others that I may open a channel for God's love to come to all. Jai Guru, Jai Christ. Wishing you all a very blessed Christmas. All right, so now let us spend some time praying for others and for world peace. Please rise and let us practice Paramahansa Yogananda's healing technique. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, Thou art omnipresent. Thou art in all Thy children. Manifest Thy healing presence in their bodies. Heavenly Father, Thou art omnipresent. Thou art in all Thy children. Manifest Thy healing presence in their minds. Heavenly Father, Thou art omnipresent. Thou art in all Thy children. Manifest Thy healing presence in their souls. Let us chant Om once more for world peace and harmony. Om. Let us pray, Heavenly Father, Mother, Friend, Beloved God, Jesus Christ, Bhagavan Krishna, 
Mahavatar Bhavaji, Lahiri Mahashaya, Swami Sri Akteshwar, and our Guru, Paramahansa Yogananda, saints of all religions, we bow to you all. O infinite Christ, uplift our hearts and minds, help us to feel thy living presence, thy loving presence, right within our hearts. Bless us. Help us to always live in tune with thee. Om. Peace. Amen.